Hey there, welcome back into the Bulldog Blitz. I have the honor to be joined by Eric Brown, our Bulldog Blitz senior analyst, back for the fourth season. Eric, delighted to have you back in studio. Um, let's talk about men's basketball first. Uh, having a great season, 23-4 and four now, dominating league play. Let's go back to Thursday of last week. They took on Youngstown State, got a big victory on the road. Youngstown State, a team that really struggled when they came here to Hinkle, but tough opponent on the road. Yeah, they're a really unique opponent. They have a bunch of great individual players, guys who can just go off for career highs on any given night. Uh, last time we played them, Sylvester Martin had a career high. They have a great point guard. Um, they got a bunch of guys who can really score it really quickly, and you got to be locked in defensively if you're going to go ahead and win there. And uh, we got off to a great start against them, jumped out to a, a fairly nice-sized lead, but then we had a little bit of a lapse there at the end of the first half. Uh, we're lucky to come out at halftime with a lead, and we played a much stronger defen uh, second half defensively, and I thought it was really nice to see the way they handled themselves after struggling a bit in the first ha half. And one of the players that stepped up big, we talked about him last week on the show, but Gordon Hayward, boy, career high in, in uh, rebounds. He had 22 points and really led that team. Yeah, he really had an outstanding game. He seemed to be everywhere at all times on the court. He was really cleaning up on the glass with 17 rebounds, 22 points. And one of the things I've really liked from him this year is he's, he's really not let his play diminish any once the conference season has, has come on. Last year he struggled during some games during the conference season, and I thought he's really been consistent showing up to play every night, which is something that's absolutely huge for this team. Okay, and then they take on Saturday. They go on the road to Cleveland State. And Cleveland State, a team that last year was battling, won the tournament here at Hinkle Fieldhouse. Uh, maybe not as good of a team this year on, on paper, but still a tough opponent on the road. Any team in this Horizon League can be tough. Yeah, well, they're a great team, and they they were in second place when we played them. They were trying to get that uh, number two seed by into the semifinals, so obviously they were really fired up to have us come in there. And anytime you go on the road, like you said, in, in conference play, it's going to be a tough matchup. That's a team that can really rebound the ball really well. They're very tough defensively. They pressure the ball a lot, and they like to cause a lot of turnovers, and they're very good at scoring off turnovers. But we're able to uh, play, play a strong game and come out with a, with a win, which is a huge win for us. And in the win against Cleveland State, not only did Gordon Hayward have another nice game, but Matt Howard also led the team in points. Yeah, both Matt Howard and Gordon Hayward had double-doubles, uh, very strong games from them. They actually out-rebounded Cleveland State by themselves. The Bulldogs out-rebounded the Vikings 46-20, to which, was, which is a huge margin of rebounding considering how good Cleveland State is at rebounding. Um, so I thought they, that we had a really good game over there at Cleveland. One thing I would like to see us do is cut back on the turnovers. I believe we had 17 turnovers, a lot of those coming down the stretch. Um, I really think that Butler needs to be sure to take care of the ball down the stretch um, and make those free throws to uh, eliminate any chance teams have of coming back. 16-0 and 0 in Horizon League play. It ties Green Bay back in the mid-90s for the longest uh, or the best start in league play. It's amazing because you think with so many games you can slip up at least one day, but they haven't done that. They've played tough games all the way through, and it's been impressive what they've done in the Horizon League. Yeah, they, we've really had a great year so far. Um, it's been fun to watch because every single night you step on the court, these teams are gunning for us, taking our best shot, and we want to be sure to try to give them our best shot too, especially when you have to go on the road, you know, five games in eight days, that really takes a lot out for a team. So for them to have the focus and the preparation to come out every single night, every single day, and play uh, as, as good as they possibly can, it's, it's really good to see, and it's, it's very promising for the rest of the year. You and I have exchanged thoughts on the bracket buster. They will take on Siena. Siena, who's had an interesting past week, uh, will come to Hinkle Fieldhouse on Saturday. Talk to me about that matchup. We've talked about it here on the show for the last week. Um, but what do you see out of Siena that could present some problems for Butler? Well, Siena's a great team. Obviously, it was disappointing to see them drop that tough one at Niagara um, over the past weekend, but they've got a couple great players. Uh, their point guard, Moore, is uh, averaging almost eight assists a game, which is tops in the, almost tops in the nation. Um, Rossiter, he's averaging a double-double a game. they got a couple other great big guys, so Butler's going to have to be really locked in defensively. They're going to have to execute their stuff on offense if they want to win this game because Siena's going to become hungry for a win. Um, they're going to try to. They're going to be wanting an at-large bid, and this would obviously be a, a, an enormous game for them. Okay, now let's move pace and, and talk about women's basketball. Uh, on Thursday, while the men were at Youngstown State, the women were taking on Youngstown State here at Hinkle Fieldhouse. Um, close game at Youngstown State, not so much here at Hinkle Fieldhouse. Well, Youngstown State's women's teams really struggled this year. They they haven't won a game yet this year, and. 
you know, sometimes that can present problems to teams because it's difficult to get motivated for a team that you know that hasn't won. So I thought Butler did a really good job. Melanie Thornton coming out, getting 16 points, 10 rebounds. They executed and really just there's just too much to handle for Youngstown State. Well, then on Saturday, it was a special game for not only the fact that they won the game against Cleveland State, but it was also the WBCA Pink Zone game. Very special for Coach Kuchar. It was a breast cancer awareness game, uh, as well as the entire athletic department. Yeah, obviously that's a really special game for the team and Coach Kuchar fighting cancer, being a cancer survivor. So that's something I'm sure motivated the girls to come out and play well. They, they did play very well. Um, uh, Melanie Thornton, like I said, she had a great game. Uh, another double-double, 16 points, 10 rebound. And if you remember Maya, a pick for uh, <laughs> surprise player of the year for the women's team, Tara Burns. No, you're going to drop that. Had 12 <laughs> points and 9 assists with zero turnovers. That's really an outstanding game. If your point guard can have that many assists and no turnovers, that's just something that you're going to win a lot of games if, if your point guard can play like that. Take a lot of pride in that Tara Burns pick. <laughs> Okay, so now they go on the road. They take on Detroit and Ryan State. Detroit's been surprising, having a great season. Uh, they're going to make sure they don't slip up on the road. Yeah, it's going to be a great opportunity uh, this upcoming week. Detroit's in first place. Butler's only one game back in second place. Um, Butler got the win over Detroit, a pretty big margin of victory, actually. I, I believe it was 21 points. So Detroit's obviously going to come out hungry, wanting to get back, get a little revenge on that game. So they're going to come, have to come out focused. And after the Detroit game, you've got to make sure you don't overlook Wright State because any game, like I said, any game you play on the road, the other team's going to be uh, aiming to take you down. And you and I had talked, lastly, um, there was talk of expanding the tournament, the uh, men's side, to 96 teams, and you were very opinionated on that matter. What's, what's your take on that? I, I just think it's a <laughs> terrible idea. Um, I, I mentioned that I, I would lose all hope in, in sporting events if that were to happen. <laughs> Um, the tournament's perfect the way it is. Every, everybody loves it, and I just don't think it's necessary. You're going to see the uh, level of competition decrease, and really there's no sense in doing it when its sole motivation is money. All right. Well, not that you have an opinion or anything about that, <laughs> but thank you for joining us this week, Eric. We appreciate it. All right. That'll do it for this segment of the Bulldog Blitz. When we come back, more on the show. Stay with us. The weekend of sports here at Butler University gets started a little bit earlier this week on Wednesday. That's because the men's basketball team will take on the UIC Flames on Wednesday night at 7 p.m. as they aim to remain undefeated in league play. On Friday, the women's tennis team will take on Cincinnati at the Butler Bubble, and that match gets started at 11 a.m. Then on Saturday, the men's basketball team is at it again, this time taking on Siena in the Bracket Buster Contest. That game can be seen on ESPN2 and will be getting underway at 11 a.m. Well, that will just about do it for this week's episode of the Bulldog Blitz. Make sure to catch us on Comcast On Demand or online at youtube.com backslash Bulldog Blitz Sports. Until then, I'm Mark Minner. We'll see you right back here on the Bulldog Blitz.